The new study has found that the waters and marine life of False Bay in Cape Town are home to a wide range of human medication. When people eat uh, fish tainted with antibiotics, the trace amounts can cause resistance, rendering treatment against infection useless. The authors say the study points to major flaws in the city of Cape Town's wastewater treatment plants. Leslie Patrick, University of the Western Cape Environmental and Nanoscience Research Group leader, joins me now from Cape Town for more on this. I must say, Professor Patrick, that my jaw dropped, really, I'm, and I, 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 I don't use this lightly, this expression lightly, uh, when and I saw the actual names of some of the compounds that you found in various species uh, of false bay. Uh, some of these names I can't even pronounce. Diclofenac, Diclofenac uh, is one of them, sulfamethoxazole, um, and some other anti inflammatory. What's happening here? Well, the main problem with uh, our wastewater treatment plants is that they're not designed to take these compounds out. And we're all using those compounds regularly uh, for various purposes uh, for health and welfare. And uh, of course, when you use those compounds, they are passing through your system. Um, not all of it is metabolized and it goes into the um, sewage system and through the wastewater treatment plant because our wastewater treatment plants don't have enough treatment uh, stages on them. And it's not just uh, the Western Cape's wastewater that is problematic, it's the whole country's in terms of these chemicals. Um, we basically need to improve our wastewater treatment plants terrifically if we want to stop this contamination. What we have found is that there are tons and tons of medication that's unmetabolized that's going out into False Bay and into other areas around our coast because the sewage is not being treated properly. Yeah, and, 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 and that's an interesting finding, uh, Prof, I've got to tell you, because when I heard that we'll be having this conversation, immediately I thought that you were talking about, um, you know, what people deposit in the ocean by way of uh, waste that we generate in our daily lives, but little did I imagine that this is actually slightly different in that it, is, it has to do with what we consume, uh, the various compounds that we consume uh, that are not then treated through the wastewater uh, treatment plants and end up in the ocean. And then along that vein, it would appear then that in a way we are causing ourselves health problems further down the line uh, through our failure to actually do this wastewater treatment thing properly? Absolutely. You know, we have a huge problem in South Africa with um, plastics and everything landing up in the ocean, and that is visible co contamination. But we cannot see the chemicals that are going out into the ocean with the sewage, because these are molecular-sized compounds. The trouble is that the organisms in the ocean, the fish and the mussels and other little organisms like the birds, are taking in these compounds. And they, these compounds were not designed to be consumed by these organisms. So the first harm that we're doing to ourselves is that we're slowly but surely killing off all the different species that inhabit our coastline. And we are causing changes in marine species. For instance, we can be causing feminization, which means that all the fish are slowly but surely turning into women, which will be the end of the um, species. The other thing, of course, is that we eat quite a few of these uh, seafoods, and then we are bringing those compounds back onto our plates and consuming a, a wide mixture of these con uh, contaminants. Now, we tested for quite a few pharmaceuticals and various other compounds, um, and those were the compounds that we actually measured. But we actually also detected many, many other compounds. So each one of these organisms had many, many different compounds in them. So these poor organisms are having to deal with the cocktail of these, organi uh, of these compounds and we are having to deal with a cocktail of these compounds if we eat the uh, seafood 
Mm. And this is a problem because we want to export these fish. We want to sell them to our communities. And in a sense, we are causing a, a health issue because people are taking in small amounts of all kinds of chemicals that they have no idea of the effect of it. Mm. It's similar to you going to stand in the pharmacy and taking a half a tablet of everything in the pharmacy all at once. I don't think your health would stay very sure. good for very long. Wow, that is scary. That, that, that paints it quite vividly. Uh, not to be facetious or anything, Prof, uh, you mentioned some of the side effects being uh, feminization and lower quality of sperm, uh, but also talk about uh, some of these compounds leading to sexual abnormalities and reproductive impairments. And this is the part I want to understand here. You're saying in both sea life and humans. Yes. Um, if, if one gets this uh, mixture of compounds, you don't actually know how it's affecting your body. Remember, pharmaceuticals are designed to be bioactive. They're designed to achieve a certain effect in your body if you are suffering from a particular disease. Um, now, we're quite big organisms, and maybe we can cope with uh, a variety of toxins like this. But small organisms like fish and mussels and sea urchins are not designed to take in these compounds, and these compounds have unknown effects on these organisms. Um, we recently did a study uh, testing what these compounds do to the sperm of oysters, for instance. And we're finding that the sperm of oysters actually stops, they stop swimming. They become immotile. So that kind of means that if the oysters are exposed to this, they're just not going to be able to spawn. Mm. Prof, lastly, what is to be done? I, I, I see that you highlight the urgency of the moment, that we need to be acting and acting now. What are some of the key two or three steps that would need to be taken by authorities that run these wastewater treatment plants? And this is not to single out the city of Cape Town, as you say. It's just where you did your study. But broadly, what do authorities need to do immediately? The first thing, of course, is that we need to improve our water quality uh, guidelines so that uh, the wastewater treatment plants have to treat the water to a better quality because at the moment the water quality guidelines are very poor and there's nothing to stop the wastewater treatment plants from releasing this water. The second thing is that we have to put tertiary treatment in at, at our wastewater treatment plants so that we can break down these compounds there are quite a few ways to break down these compounds, but you need to know what you're doing. And if you can break them down, they won't go out in the effluents and they won't be contaminating our environment. So that barrier at the wastewater treatment plant is vital. We re really need to improve the barrier at the wastewater treatment plants. All right, Prof, I've got to thank you for your time this evening. It's sobering uh, reading, uh, reading your, uh, your survey and what, uh, the work that you have done. Uh, thank you for sharing it with us. That's Professor Leslie Patrick of UWC's uh, Environmental and Nanoscience Research Group.